Good morning. Welcome to worship. Um, for those of you here and for those worshiping online, we welcome you this morning. As you came in, the July newsletters are available. If you didn't grab one on your way in, please be sure to grab one on your way out. It is also available on our website. There are several uh, announcements in the newsletter, or excuse me, in the bulletin. Please take note of all of those. And uh, please remember Sue Blumendahl's family this week. Sue uh, passed away on Wednesday. Her service will be Wednesday at 1030 here at Redeemer with visitation Tuesday evening here at Redeemer as well. Are there any other announcements this morning? Very good. We will begin our service with our opening hymn, Rise Up, O Saints of God. Please stand as you are able. God, to whom all hearts are opened, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus, your sins are fully forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Teach us, good Lord, God, to, say, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the costs, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
Amen. The first lesson is from Jeremiah, the 20th chapter. You deceived me, Lord, and I was deceived. You overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed all day long. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I cry out, proclaiming violence and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. But if I say, I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name. His word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. I hear my many whispering, terror on every side, denounce him, let's denounce him. All my friends are waiting for me to slip, saying, perhaps he will be deceived. Then we will prevail over him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior, so my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be thoroughly disgraced. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. Lord Almighty, you who examine the righteous and probe the heart and mind, let me see your vengeance on them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, give praise to the Lord. He rescues the life of the needy from the hands of the wicked. Word of God, word of life. <clears throat> the second lesson is from Romans, the sixth chapter. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we, for if we have been united with him in a death like his, we certainly also will be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. At this time, all the children may come forward and gather your penny offerings on the way up, please. morning. All right, thank you for joining me today. Um, have any of you ever had a candle on top of a treat on your birthday? And then after you blow it out, what do people usually tell you to do? Or what's the tradition? To make a wish, yes. And um, sometimes we also wish in other ways, like if we have a picnic or a baseball game that we go to, we want the weather to be beautiful so it doesn't make our plans um, have to stop or have to change, right? And so, or if you have something fun at school, you really wish that you can go and have fun and not be homesick. And 
So wishes um, are a part of, you know, just being a kid, being an adult. We all have hopes and wishes. Um, so I have a story about two disciples of Jesus's that had a wish. Um, James and John came up to Jesus one time and said, Jesus, we really want you to, um, we have something we want, to tell, we want you to do for us. And Jesus said, well, what would that be? How can I help you? And um, they said, well, when you're king, we want to sit on the left side and the right side of you on your throne. And Jesus said, oh, no, no, no. That's not why I'm here on earth. I'm here to serve people. And so if you want to be like me, um, then I'm going to lead by serving. And so serving people is how um, Jesus wanted to help people, not being by big and strong, right, and a leader and ruling over people. He wants to lead by service. So I have a little prayer for us to um, think about serving. So can you fold your hands with me, please? And repeat after me, dear God, please help us to mean it when we say, I wish I could be more like Jesus. Please show us how we can become a greater servant to those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. As we prepare for the Holy Gospel, please stand as you're able and we'll sing Alleluia. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus says, The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called vegetable, how much more the members of his household? So, do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hair, heirs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. 
I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Please remain standing for our praise hymn of the day. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. But we won't be quiet. Oh, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. Oh, we shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Oh, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. Oh, we shout out. Accepted, redeemed by His grace Let the house of the Lord sing praise We were the beggars Now we're royalty We were the prisoners Now we're running free We are forgiven, accepted Redeemed by His grace Let the house of the Lord sing praise there's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Oh, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. Oh, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. Oh, we shout out your praise. You may be seated. Pastor Casey is on vacation this week, but he prepared our message, and so please direct your attention to the monitors. Hey, hey, and good morning, Redeemer. It's great to be with you, even if it's virtually on the screens. I want to thank you for making God, for making God's word, for making Jesus and this church a priority in your life. 
And I also want to thank both Karna and Aubrey for helping to lead worship this Sunday morning. We're trying something new this year on those Sundays that I'm away on vacation with someone leading worship, someone giving the children's message, and then me kind of pre-recording the sermon. I'm actually taping this on Wednesday because we're up in Yankton, South Dakota for some baseball games and some fun time on the river up in Yankton. So just a little rest and relaxation for the Lindemann family. But again, it's great to see you this morning. Well, if you know me, you know that I like to start my messages off with something a little bit lighthearted. And I heard about this pastor who was driving down the highway when all of a sudden he was pulled over by a police officer. The officer walked up to the side of the car, had the minister roll down his window, and the police officer thought he smelled alcohol inside of the vehicle. And he noticed there was this thermos sitting next to the pastor. He asked the pastor, what's inside of that thermos? pastor said, well, just water, officer. The cop asked to see the thermos, and the, the minister handed it over. The cop opens it up, takes one sniff out of it, and says, I think I smell wine in here. The pastor said, well, what do you know? Jesus did it again. <laughs> Grace and peace to you from God the Father, and from our Lord, and from our Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Jesus turning water into wine at the wedding at Cana. Well, again, it's great to see you. It's great to be with you this morning. Today, I want to talk to you about fear. The technical name for it in the scientific community is phobia. And all of us have different fears. Some of us have bigger, greater fears than others, but... You know, all of us have different things in our, our world, our lives, that make us a little uneasy, maybe gets our heart racing a little bit, situations that we really avoid. For instance, public speaking is a very common phobia. The idea of getting before people at church and speaking is, is something that, you know, a lot of people are, are really hesitant to do and just would rather never do. Or the fear of heights is very common. You know, getting high and looking down. Oh man, for some people, that's a lot. I think about our confirmation kids. They go to Camp Carol Joy Halling every summer. And part of their week at Camp Carol Joy Halling is they have the opportunity to do what is called the high ropes course. And the high ropes is truly high ropes. It's, I think, 50 feet up in the air, maybe 60 feet up in the air. And these kids, they, they climb up. They're, they're all harnessed. It's all safe. There's a double harness on them. There's, there's really no danger to it outside of climbing up and, you know, walking across these, these very skinny ropes and, and, and kind of swaying up there. And one of the cool things about that opportunity is when they do it, they realized, you know, they were okay. And they overcame a fear. And I know after they do it, they're stronger. They're better because of it. They, they overcame something that a lot of them didn't think they were capable of doing. But there's a lot of phobias out there. There's a lot of different things that, that people get afraid of. And I did a quick search of the different types of phobias out there. And truth be told, there are hundreds and hundreds of different types of phobias. For instance, if you have a fear of the dark, kind of a more common type of phobia, but a fear of the dark, the, the technical name for this is occluophobia. Occluophobia, the fear of the dark. Or if you have a fear of spiders, another common phobia, you see a a spider and you might shriek and run out of the room as quickly as possible. This is known as arachnophobia, arachnophobia, fear of spiders. Or how about a fear of all things, a fear of the dentist. Now you didn't know that this, this was a, a technical phobia, but it's dentophobia, a fear of the dentist. And 
you know, I think a lot of us would say we don't necessarily have a fear of the dentist, but a lot of us really don't enjoy going to the dentist either. And I'd put myself in that camp. You know, there's something awkward about sitting in that dentist chair. You got your mouth open and you know, there's some pain that, that comes with maybe having a cavity filled. But for me, the, the, the most awkward thing about going to the dentist is having your mouth open and your, your teeth are getting cleaned and you've got that dental hygienist who just wants to chat and chat and chat with you. You're trying to keep your mouth open and you're having this conversation with them. I, you can't do it. And this happens to me all the time. I go to the dentist and, you know, just they want to have a, a conversation. But dentophobia is what you'd call it if you have a fear of the dentist. But there's some very more obscure, strange phobias out there. For instance, did you know that there are people who have fear of flowers? A fear of flowers, and this is called anthophobia. I didn't know it either. Anthophobia, fear of flowers. Or maybe even more obscure, a fear of the color white. Yes, fear of white, and this is leukophobia. If you fear the color white, and you know, I can't help but to think they, they better stay away from paper and snow. The fear of the color white. Now we as a, a globe, we here on planet Earth, not only here in Nebraska or the United States, but globally witness, you know, one of the, the most seismic fear causing things that that have ever um come onto this earth and what am i talking about it's covid and covid caused a lot of people to, to, to live in fear and you could say that there was a good healthy sense that the fear was needed that you know wearing masks and isolating ourselves was for a good cause in a lot of ways and it kept a lot of people from getting sick it kept a lot of people from dying but i also believe that for many people the fear was was overblown the fear was more than what was was truly you know in reality and you know i know there's still people today three years later who have this this fear of covid and it's causing them um to miss things in life it's causing them to continue to to isolate themselves c continuing to not going to places like church or ball games or even the store and now, I remember about a year ago, I was driving uh, down the road, got pulled over at the stoplight, and I looked over, and there was one solitary person in the vehicle next to me, and that person had a mask on. And I couldn't help but to think, you know, the, the fear of COVID was so strong that they're all alone in their own vehicle, and yet they, they still had this, this mask on. And, you know, in a lot of ways, I felt sorry for that person. I, I felt that, you know, that that fear had just grown into something that was really causing them harm. Now today, Jesus talks about fear. Our Lord and our Savior talks about fear, and he's pretty upfront about it, isn't he? Jesus this morning tells us not to fear the person who can cause us bodily harm. And I think in some ways, Jesus, by saying that, he would say, you know, don't fear the different things that can harm you in this life. And there's many things that can harm us. You know, war, um, we can be physically attacked, we can be physically hurt, we can talk about germs and sickness, um, we can talk about, you know, tornadoes, we can talk about all the, those different things, all those phobias. And Jesus would say, do not be afraid of those things. And when I hear Jesus say that, I had to, you know, kind of take a step back. And, you know, part of me wonders, you know, what is Jesus getting at? And Jesus reminds us, I think rightfully reminds us of who is really in control. God the Father is in control. And I love how Jesus uses the sparrows in the sky. And Jesus says, don't you know? that God cares about? Don't you know that God loves those sparrows? 
how much more so do you think God loves and cares for you? And he talks about the hairs on our head. And God knows how many different hairs you have on your head. That's how much God knows you. That's how much God cares for you. Now, I don't think Jesus is saying that we're meant to live this life whimsically. I don't think Jesus is saying that we're meant to live this life foolishly. I don't think Jesus would tell us that when you get in your car and get ready to go home, refrain from putting on that seatbelt. Live without any fear whatsoever. Let, let what be happen. I don't think Jesus is saying that because there's plenty of other instances in the Bible that you know, tells us to live with wisdom, to live with common sense, to, to protect ourselves. The Bible talks about our body being a temple, and we're meant to safeguard that as well. But I think Jesus gets at a truth that, you know, when we let fear consume our life, when we let, you know, the, the fear of whatever it might be, COVID, the, the fear of heights, the fear of public speaking, the, the fear of spiders, whatever it might be, when that fear becomes so kind of pressing on our lives that we feel like it's just not allowing us to live the life that God wants us to to the fullest, that is when fear has become something that, that, that's truly hindering our lives. Jesus tells us, do not fear the person who can suffer your body, but fear the one who can destroy both body and soul. And who is that? That's the devil, that's Satan, and that is truly somebody to fear. But I think the message for the day is, you know, you are loved by God. Did you know that? You are so cherished by God. And, you know, my last church out in West Virginia, in a lot of ways, I was blessed because it was part Lutheran and part Presbyterian. A former Lutheran church merged with the Presbyterian church about 50 years ago. And I learned a lot more about the Presbyterian Church because of it. You know, being a pastor to not only Lutherans, but also Presbyterians, I wanted to know my stuff. And the Presbyterians are really big on God is in control. God is completely in control. And there is nothing that can happen in your life, in my life, in this world that, that God does not know about that God cannot, you know, step in and intercede on. Um, you know, in some ways, I think Presbyterians go too far because we also know that God has given each of us free will as well, that, that God allows us to, to make choices in our lives, and those, those choices have consequences. And, you know, yes, God is in control, but God also allows us, allows us um, to live our lives to make choices, both good and bad. And so I think the message from Jesus today is this, that yes, you do have a choice how you live your life. You do have the choice of, you know, when you wake up tomorrow morning to, to do something new, to do something that, you know, conquers a fear. You do have the choice to, to wake up and um, to, to live in boldness, embracing this life that God has given to you. Because, you know, here's the truth. This life is short. This life is so very short. If we're blessed, we're maybe given 100 years to life. But when you stop and you step back and you realize in comparison to eternity, which is what awaits us after this life, eternal life with God in heaven for all, for all eternity. And we've got one life. We only have one life to live. Don't waste it. Don't squander it. Don't allow fear to, to, to take away even one more day of your life. Say, God, Jesus, I am going to live this life to the fullest and do it. Live it fully. Live it without any fear and know that you are loved. You are cherished. You are just so deeply prized by God, our Father, who knows even the number of hairs on your head. God is good. God is great. God is eternal. He is God of you, of me. And may he continue to bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Our service will continue with the offertory prayer. Thank you to everyone for sharing your gifts in the basket at the back of the sanctuary. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our prayers today, following God in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. Under your watch, not even a sparrow goes unnoticed. We thank you for this day you have given us. We pray for timely rain to shower upon our fields and pastures so that we may help your world. God, in your mercy. Our world is enduring violence and destruction. Rescue your people in nations experiencing conflict or crisis. Thrall the efforts of those who sow chaos and terror and guide those working to bring about peace and reconciliation. God, in your mercy. You have counted even the hairs of our heads. Reassure anyone experiencing poverty, homelessness, unemployment, or exploitation that every life has value. Look favorably upon all who struggle Answer us, for your steadfast love is good. God, in your mercy. Healer of the broken, we pray for those that are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. Send your angels to be with those that are hurting. We thank you for doctors, surgeons, and nurses that care for those that are sick. God, in your mercy. All who have died with Christ also live with him. We give thanks for those loved ones who have gone before us, whose faithful lives inspire our own discipleship and raise us with them to eternal life. God, in your mercy, receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Please join me in the prayer that was taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our sending song, I love to tell the story.
blessing today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Follow Jesus. Have a great week.